Hello, my name is Randy Hatchett. I teach at Houston Baptist University, and I specialize in the areas of uh, theology and hermeneutics and also do some church history. I've uh, edited a fourth volume of Bruce Shelley's book on church history and have co-authored with Ben Blackwell a little book on engaging theology. My uh, ongoing publishing interests are in the world of theodicy and the history of hermeneutics. Dr. Hatchett, Randy, good to see you. Thanks for being with us today on Exegetically Speaking. Thank you. My good friend David Capes, we were reminiscing before. We have. Well, I've known you many, many years, <laughs> many moons as it goes. It's been some time. And, it has and, been. And good. Yeah. And we taught together at Houston Baptist University for 25 years, and I've learned a great deal from you oh, and with you God. along the way. Yeah. So how did you get started reading biblical languages? Well, for me, it began in college. I went to a good old Baptist college, Dallas Baptist University, and they soon uh, got me going on the sophomore year in in Greek and uh, ended up doing two more years of Greek. And so on the Greek side, I, I got a fairly good start. I didn't have a great foundation, but there was some real rigor when we got to grammar and we worked through the old Dana and Mantley and diagrammed it and charted it and did flow, flow charts and all sorts of things. And so I, I got an early grasp of grammar and maybe its importance there. And then uh, since then, it's been uh, just part of the blessing of hanging around really gifted linguists I've picked up and hmm. learned a lot and had to keep reading just to kind of, kind of keep up with what's going on. And we had the good fortune of forming a biblical language department at, at HBU, where I teach. And Had some uh, great students through the years. We've had some great students and some great faculty uh, people. We've got, there are people who are just great linguists. And then there are people who get up in the morning wanting to teach somebody biblical language. Mm -hmm. The trouble is those two groups hardly ever overlap. <laughs> but at HBU, we've, we, we actually recruited several of those people. Oh, that's fantastic. And uh, so we had just some great work being done in language. We were, it, it was really a great run. You remember uh, yeah. being part of that. Well, you've used biblical languages in preaching, I guess, mm -hmm. right, over through the years. You've also used biblical languages uh, in the work that you've done in church history and theology and hermeneutics. How does that figure it in for you? I mean, not everybody's going to be a New Testament guy or an Old Testament gal, but some people will. But a lot of folks might be interested in church history or philosophy or theology. Well, I I would defend the theologians of the world as a rule. They're, they sometimes have earned the um, reputation or the charge that uh, they don't take languages seriously. But it's been my experience that most people I've known in theology have really worked very hard to stay uh, abreast of a language and um, mm -hmm. be very attentive, and their theology attempts to be kind of rooted and starting in the text. Mm -hmm. And so um, I see that the whole theological venture is really one of kind of um, pondering that text. And I'll maybe say just a couple of things. I think it was Ellen Davis, I think, in print who said, that maybe the biggest advantage for studying language was that it made a student slow down. Hmm. Now, they slow down for maybe not the right reasons exactly because they can't parse and they have to find what this word is and, and they have to reference their grammar and so on. Uh, but they uh, inadvertently, perhaps, uh, enter into another mode where they start pondering these words yeah. and thinking on these words. And that is the great kind of theological tradition. So I would say our age has divided something that in the ancient church belonged together much more seamlessly. But we've divided uh, questions, which makes this barrier between kind of language and theology as it's sometimes uh, kind of presented. And so I, I would describe it this way for you, David. I, I would say, you know, the old circle, common circle, is still a right way to understand things. You start with the economy, and then you, you form a loop, and you start theologizing. You go to the theologia or theology. Mm. That, though, presses you back to reading the text again, and so you're constantly looping between these. Mm. And they're circular in nature. Now, the economy is just the unfolding drama 
as God has managed and conducted the history of the world. And along the way, he has shown himself uh, in his doings and in uh, his teaching and so on. And we receive that, and that is sort of the foundation stone that is captured in Scripture, and that's sort of where we begin and where we all begin. But I think we are called as believers, not just as theologians, to ask some more, well, what do you want to call it? Is it just metaphysical questions? Is it, are they just synthetic questions or maybe systematic questions? Mm. In other words, somewhere along the way, someone has to say, before a preacher can say, the Holy Spirit says this or does this, someone has to say and ask the questions, well, what do I do with all those images of the Holy Spirit? I've got him in John 20 when he's person Jesus brings him out. I've got him in 14 and 16 mm -hmm. when he's being promised as another comforter. And I've got him anticipated before. And then I put that all together and I say something about, well, okay, here's what I can say about the Holy Spirit in John. Mm -hmm. But that's a more global, it's a step back. It's a, it's, it's a wider lens, I suppose you'd say. Well, it's, it's that which, I mean, you're trying to reach out to pull all that in together, right? I mean, you're trying, not necessarily yeah. to make it a system, but, there's, but to understand yeah. the whole rather than the individual parts. There's a confidence that something can be said about it meaningfully. Mm -hmm. It's not just a disparate kind of incommensurable pieces mm. but uh, that what john says about the holy spirit uh, can be spoken and captured and understood mm. and so there would be a, a level called biblical theology if we keep that rolling and but then ask questions well how do you put that together with acts 2 and 8 and, and 10 and the falling to the spirit and what luke says about it then that's a more systematic sort of question and so theologians have to grapple with the particulars of the biblical text, but they are almost by definition asking different questions. Not just did I parse this text right, or did I report this passage right, but they're asking the biblical theological model. In other words, what do I do with all of these pieces from the Bible? How do I speak to them? And then maybe even the larger systematic mode, and that is, you know, reading through tradition, which would start this way, reading as a Trinitarian. In other words, I'm a person who's been drawn by the Spirit, made alive by the Spirit, drawn toward God, where I can now, with His help, see in Jesus the image of God and understand who God is. And belonging to that great Christian tradition is the lens through which theologizing is done. Now, you came to some of those verdicts after mm -hmm. the Bible, mm -hmm. but yet they become crucial in reading to, to reading the Bible for Christians. Mm -hmm. And so there's always this back and forth, a careful, meticulous reading of the text for which grammar, linguistics is vital, uh, but also a theological mm -hmm. kind of reading, which by, I, I think, the demand of the Spirit requires us to enter into this process of being drawn to the Father through the Son and the Spirit and being made alive to the centrality of Jesus and thus being informed as a reader. Hmm. So that theologizing and, uh, and the reading of the story are a constant circle. They always inform one another. Hmm important word about hermeneutics and about the particularities of these texts. Dr. Hatchett, thanks for being with us today on Exegetically Speaking. David, thank you. It's uh, always, always a pleasure to visit with you. Hey, thanks to Ian Rosine, Rebecca Larson, and John Lonsma, who is our Wheaton-based producer there. Our purpose in these podcasts is to promote the study of biblical languages. So if you get the calling, and I hope you do, the best thing you can do is go to Wheaton College. Got a great program there. We have some of the best faculty and best students all around. So go to wheaton.edu, look for modern and classical languages, get started today. If you have questions, contact us at exegetically.speaking at wheaton.edu. Till next time, thanks for listening.